What's up everyone, welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So today we're going over the eight and a quarter inch table saw from DeWalt. If you're interested in what I have to say about it, well, stay tuned. All right, guys, we're out here in the shop now. Let's talk about this table saw. So first and foremost, the first thing I want to say is that although you're going to hear a lot of cons that come out of my mouth about this saw, I'm not naysaying it to the point where I would not recommend this saw. This saw is a great value at $3.99 today at Home Depot. The, at the time of recording this video, it is the best saw that I found for the money. So if you're looking into a higher end table saw or a job site table saw like the saw stop or a skill saw or something in the higher uh, $800 to $1,000 range, this is not it. You are going to get uh, exactly what you pay for for $399. So at eight and a quarter, you're limited to just over 2.5 inches of cut depth. So, you know, that limits you on four by fours and stuff like that. Now, is that important to me? No, it's not because I use this as a, a hardwood cutting saw. Um, so I'm usually cutting laminate or hardwood floor on this saw. So I don't need all of those options like being able to cut a four by eight sheet of plywood or um, you know cutting four by fours and stuff like that. If you're looking for that option, then by all means, um, you know, you need to search elsewhere. So the stand does not come with the saw. So that's another caveat to the 399 is although it's a great deal, you have to still pay $70 for this other uh, tubular stand that you see here. Now a rolling stand is gonna cost you double the money as that. So it's gonna cost you around $150, $160 um, if you want the DeWalt actual folding miter saw stand that also, you know, you can put the table saw on. Now, I don't recommend those because they are cumbersome and they're big. Um, this folding stand folds up to um, a little bit of basically nothing, um, but there are some cons to that. It's not very tall. So if you're looking at this saw stand, it comes in at 33 inches table height. So you can see that um, it is definitely below the waist and it's uncomfortable to work at um, if you are using it a lot through the day. So that's one of the things that I don't like about it is that the table saw stand is very low. So if it were to come up a couple inches, I would not hate it. Um, it's certainly better than working on your knees and having this table saw on the ground. So I get that part, but I would like to see a table saw stand that was a little higher. So let's bring you in close. I'm gonna show you some features that I like and I don't like. Okay, so let's first talk about this fence system here. It has this nice release lever and lockdown lever over here on the right hand side of the saw. So once you lock it into place, it is very positive. It's not going anywhere. Once you unlock it, this rack and pinion system moves very, very easily back and forth. So in the storage position, your fence stores underneath the left side of the saw and can easily be taken off and placed on one of two detents. The outer detent will get you 24 inches of rip and the inner detent is 20 inches. So since I use this as a flooring contractor saw and I'm usually just using it for hardwood floors, I don't use it on anything but the 20 inch setting. So one thing I do love about this saw is the little drop down extension on the fence. So this allows you, no matter how much your material's coming out here, you have a place for it to sit on the fence when it is further out here. Now, I rarely use that, but if you're ripping sheet goods or something like that, it can uh, work out in your favor. One thing, once you deploy this, you cannot bring it back over to here, so it quickly reminds you that this fence extension is down. So. Oh, another one of my pet peeves on this saw, I'll bring you in at another angle here. One of my pet peeves here is that you have two different measurements here on your fence, so, or on the front of your saw. So six inches or 10 inches, they're four inches apart due to your fence being able to be on two different detents. So when you're using this or on the fly, you need to make sure that you are using it for the right detent that you're using. So if you're using the left detent, you need to be on this yellow ruler. If you're using the right detent, it's four inches further to the right. So you're gonna use this white 
So I've caught myself cutting boards at the, the white uh, measurement and actually what I'm doing is I'm cutting the, f the yellow measurement. So when your fence is out a little further and you're not paying attention, this is real easy to make a four inch mistake. It's a real pain in the butt sometimes. Now let's demonstrate exactly how accurate this is. I'm going to set this on four inches here and I'm going to lock the fence down and, and look just how accurate this is actually to the fence. So you can adjust this small, uh, this small gauge here on the side. You can adjust it to exact measurements and that's what's really nice is once you've got this locked in, it is 100% accurate at your fence. So one thing that DeWalt did get right on this saw is the storage options on it. So your fence being able to be stored on the left side of the saw, um, your blade, uh, your blade wrenches being able to be stored up underneath it, and also your uh, different uh, your different riving knives and your your uh, blade guards and stuff like that. Your miter. Uh, miter attachment can even be put in the back. So that brings me to my next point. So this small miter gauge um, has a lot to be desired. Although it is metal, um, it just has a lot of fit and finish that uh, would just be a lot better if it was designed just a little bit better. So I usually almost never use this thing because I just feel that it's chintzy and cheap and there's a lot of slop in the saw. So I really do not enjoy this. I don't like this accessory. Um, I pretty much just keep it up underneath the saw and I really never use it. So that's something that leaves a little bit to be desired on this saw, but it is what it is. So blade changes are ridiculously easy on this saw. A quick quarter turn uh, release here on the blade cover uh, will uh, basically you know, reveal everything about the blade. Now, one thing that uh, went bad on my old table saw was this canvas piece in here, as you can see here. Now, this canvas piece uh, rises and falls with the actual transom of the, the motor and the blade. And so after a while, this will wear out and then uh, you'll get cuts and um, basically a gap in here where your dust collection won't work. So. That's just one of those things that wore out on my old saw, but uh, you know, and this also doesn't uh, accept dado blades, which ah, for a table saw uh, for the job site, not really a deal breaker, but you know, it'd be nice to be able to uh, at least put a small dado in this uh, to be able to be a little bit more effective. Now, easily changed out riving knife and um, dust collection system over the blade, which I don't use, but I just use a riving knife. Um, it does do pretty well. So I really enjoy this riving knife system um, here. You literally just spin this little wing nut off and then you can press it in. It's on a little spring loaded. Just press it in and the knife comes right out. It's easily changeable. Um, you put it right back on, spin the wing nut down um, and it's good to go. You have absolutely zero commitment into changing that out um, to your dust collection, uh, plastic blades, or a different riving knife. Um, you know, that is a very, very nice feature with this saw. Okay, so I currently have this in the locked position, which I usually do if I'm not planning on using it, just to keep somebody from inadvertently starting the saw for no reason. Um, you can put a padlock in here, but I've never done such a thing. If you do want to lock out the tool, you can. But uh, nice quick button press and a big kill switch here to hit the red button. So the kill switch really doesn't come up or move out of place. It is what it is. It's right there. You can hit it with your knee. You can uh, hit it with your hand real quick. Nice panic button. I really, really like that feature. So um, really can't complain about that. Very nice fit and finish there. They did that absolutely right. Now, the quick rise and lowering of the blade is awesome. The quick disengage of the, uh, the miter portion of the saw here, and you can sw uh, swoop it over to 45 degrees. It goes up to 48 degrees uh, one way and two degrees, negative two degrees the other way if you want. So a quick lockdown and you have a pretty accurate setup right out of the box. 
Now, one thing I didn't talk about is the quick and easily accessible uh, push push stick here that mounts into the back of the fence. I think that that is an awesome feature that is you know one of those things where you don't really think about how often you would use that or one available, but maybe you get into something where you're cutting close to the fence and you know you don't wanna stop because the push stick is not accessible. Well, it's actually right here and you have no excuse but not to use it. All right, last but not least, the thing I wanna talk about is dust collection. So this saw does an excellent job of dust collection. Now you can get the plastic piece that goes over the blade that also has a dust collection port on it, but that would require you to run two saws or a Y piece in your shop back that mostly nobody has. So I'm gonna hook this up to my Craftsman uh, six horsepower 16 gallon vacuum and we're gonna cut a test piece of wood on here. I'm gonna show you the dust collection principle or uh, properties of this saw. So first we're going to make a cut with no dust collection here and I'm gonna show you just how much dust comes out of the back of this saw. All right, now let's hook up our, our shop vac here and show you just how much this helps. So you can see that dust collection does an awesome job at uh, taking care of most everything that comes out of this saw. I don't use the plastic piece overhead um, because I frankly don't have any use for it. All right guys, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that the stand is designed for you to bolt it together. So if you've noticed through the entire video, I've had this thing unbolted from the stand and this, the bolts were laying on the floor. So roll on a clip here. I really like that you're able to just pull this off the stand and walk with it the, the table side towards you um, and not away from you. It makes it real easy to carry uh, wherever you're taking it. But that's one of the cons to the the saw stand and the way it comes is it's designed to be bolted to the saw. So if it's bolted to the saw, you can't just pick the saw up and go. So overall, this table saw is a great value at $399. It is a great uh, job site compact table saw that can be used by DIYers or contractors that don't need a lot of table saw work but they need something to get them by. I would not recommend this table saw for ripping four by eight sheet goods um, out on a job site. I would go to a different solution than this, but I think this definitely covers a certain market for you. So um, the overall fit and finish is awesome, but there are some nitpicky things that I just wish were executed a little better. Do I have any recommendations on how to execute those better? No, not really. I just show you the things that have gone wrong or that I get frustrated with after owning two of these saws. So I would highly recommend you put a Diablo blade or a Freud blade on one of these saws if you have the means to do so. I do not like the DeWalt blades that come with it. That's just my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the comments below. Let's talk about it. If you're subscribed to the channel, then I guess we'll see you guys in the next video.